Commercial companies are urging Tesla to speed up the semi-truck production schedule for early delivery when the quantity has not changed from 100 units for so long. Production lines have also restarted and we will soon see more of these big rigs this year. The clearest sign that Tesla is building more 750 kilowatt megachargers despite the silly hurdles. In addition, the Tesla Semi will most likely have its battery pack changed to a battery technology being produced in Nevada. Of course, not the 4680. Let's find out more now. Pepsi paid for 100 Tesla Semi trucks in 2017 but only got 36. Additionally, Tesla has yet to deliver any of the 125 trucks UPS ordered. Meanwhile, some of the world's largest companies including Walmart, Cisco, FedEx, and JB Hunt are eagerly awaiting their Tesla electric trucks. As we previously reported, Tesla is currently attempting to produce an additional 500 to 1,000 units at the Nevada factory to fulfill orders before transitioning to manufacturing a higher-end variant of the big rigs. Why is Tesla producing more semi-trucks at Giga Nevada? A recent report suggests that Tesla may advance its plan to establish a network of nine megacharger stations for the Tesla Semi, even if the Biden administration does not provide funding support. According to a former Tesla vice president, the electric vehicle manufacturer could pivot towards state funding or even use its own resources to build the Tesla Semi megacharger route. The expansion of additional megacharger stations specifically for big rigs aligns perfectly with confirmed reports that Tesla's manufacturing and distributing between 500 and 1,000 units before the mass production ramp-up begins. The source also says they're building a separate building in the north end of the Giga Nevada property for high-volume semi-production. In the interim, they can ramp up the prototype production line for and get low-volume deliveries to customers. It can be seen that this is not just a coincidence, but actually a good sign to announce that the number of semi-trucks is increasing after many delays. However, we don't think that Tesla will deliver all the electric trucks to customers in the event that they actually produce an additional 1,000 units from now until the end of the year. As Dan Priestley, Tesla Semi Engineering, shared on X, the Tesla Semi demonstrates that battery-powered trucks can directly replace diesel trucks as the electric trucks continuously transport over 20,000 battery packs per day at a Gigafactory in Nevada to support vehicle manufacturing in Fremont. What we mean here is that Tesla actually needs the semi-truck to support the transportation process of components and batteries between factories rather than solely commercialize them. Of course, manufacturers can indeed replace them with diesel trucks, but it doesn't seem to align with the essence of an electric vehicle company, especially when they've got their own electric trucks. In the process of transporting these battery packs, the Tesla Semi runs on the same route carrying the same payload as diesel trucks, but with significantly lower operating costs. Previously, a series of big rig components such as tires, axle housings, and leaf springs of semis were also found stockpiled in large quantities at the Nevada plant in preparation for the production of these electric trucks. If all that information can't make you feel convinced about the number of Tesla semis being ramped up into production, then things don't seem to stop just yet. One piece of evidence that Tesla's quite interested in is their electric trucks lately and the fact that Tesla Semi is currently conducting a pilot with another customer. As noted by semi-truck technical director Dan Priestley, Martin Brower has also begun a pilot for Class 8 all-electric trucks. The results of the program so far have been quite encouraging. Specifically, logistics company Martin Brower announced it was using two Tesla Semis to deliver orders to customers at its restaurant as part of a pilot program. In a post on X, the Tesla executive thanked MB and the Semi's other customers for working with the company to test, develop, and refine the all-electric truck. He also expressed his appreciation for the Semi's customers' patience as the vehicle is still yet to see mass production. The MB drivers generally responded positively to the Class 8 all-electric truck. Casey Camp, one of Martin Brower's drivers, praised the Tesla Semi for its precise maneuverability. The Tesla Semi raises above any other tractor with mobility, center seat configuration, and precise movement that allows the driver to navigate safely, Camp noted. Martin Brower Assistant Transportation Manager Megan Yamaguchi echoed similar sentiments. The Tesla Semi experience has been impressive since day one. Our drivers had no problem learning the system and maximizing the features that set these tractors apart. We've been able to push these tractors well beyond expectations and look forward to our electric future, the executive noted. According to Reuters, under the Joe Biden administration, companies using electric trucks are eligible to receive large subsidies to offset their purchases. Pepsi got more than $20 million in government funding to cover the cost of 32 semis, plus a federal subsidy of $40,000 a vehicle. Why will Tesla Semi test new battery technology in Giga Nevada? 
At the end of 2022, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said annual production of the semi would reach 50,000 units by 2024. Fast forward to June 2023, the outspoken chief has tempered his expectations and said the company does not expect to begin volume production of electric semi vehicles before the end of 2024, citing limitations about the battery supply. The Tesla Semi is currently rumored to use 2170 battery packs, a closely kept secret by the manufacturer. While the exact capacity of these battery packs remains a mystery, based on energy consumption per mile of 1.7 kilowatt hours and a maximum range of 500 miles, it can be predicted that they have a capacity of 850 to 900 kilowatt hours. If Tesla Semi actually integrates these 2170 battery packs, there will be many obvious advantages. The stable energy density of the 2170 battery provides high performance and safety while reducing production costs thanks to the popularity of this technology. This also means long life and better performance over the long term. However, the disadvantage of using the 2170 battery pack cannot be denied. Their large size can reduce the Tesla Semi's cargo capacity, which is worth noting when space in the car is an important factor in transporting goods. In addition, the slow charging speed compared to other battery technologies is also a notable limitation. In particular, as battery technology advances, the 2170 battery is at a risk of becoming obsolete, forcing Tesla Semi to choose another superior battery technology that's more optimal in this increasingly competitive market. Coincidentally, Nevada is preparing to produce LFP Gen 2 battery packs. The LFP Gen 2 battery, officially known as Shenzhen or as simply Superfast Charging, was officially launched in August 2023 at the Cattle Conference in Europe. The reason we call it the second LFP is because they've been improved to a new level. According to Cattle, because this second generation fast ion ring further contributes to the system's extremely high conductivity combined with nanocrystal cathode material, the new LFP battery is capable of super fast charging in just 15 minutes from 10 to 80%. That's really crazy compared to the current charging speed of electric trucks. Drivers of PepsiCo have stated that the current Tesla Semi charges from 0 to 75% in 45 minutes with a 750 kilowatt mega charger. In reality, this is a stable charging rate for a Class 8 electric truck, but we believe the big rig will become the full focus of the transportation industry if it gets even faster speeds with Cattle's new battery packs. This information was confirmed by Cattle CEO not long ago when China's leading battery manufacturer sent LFP Gen 2 battery production equipment and machinery to Tesla's Nevada factory. Given that the $25,000 Model 2 is having leaks related to shelving production, these battery packs will most likely be for the semi because the electric truck and this battery pack are created in the same area, which is quite convenient. Let's not talk about 4680 battery hypothesis for the semi since it's still being prioritized for the Cybertruck at least from now until the end of 2025. On the other hand, we do not think 4680 cells are a good idea for the big rigs because you know, these new battery cells are pretty big and heavy for an electric truck that actually needs to reduce weight. Back to potential battery technology for the semi-truck. More than just speed, Cattle's Gen 2 LFP battery is also the world's first LFP battery to support 4C charging. For those not familiar about the 4C super fast charging feature, specifically C means a charging battery multiplier, saying how many times the battery can be charged in an hour. Thus, 4C means it can be charged in 15 minutes and four times in an hour. It's worth noting that the Shenxing battery also has a remarkable lifespan, with over a thousand charging cycles equivalent to at least 200,000 miles of use. This proves that Cattle has not only focused on improving charging performance, but also paid attention to product durability and longevity. While not becoming too terrible in cold weather because at least Tesla Semi has demonstrated its operational capacity through the most extreme climates, the 2170 battery cells used in the Tesla Semi experience reduced efficiency in cold weather because fundamentally, it still belongs to the nature of lithium ion. If operated in low temperature areas, the 2170 cells still enable Tesla Semi to travel about 420 out of 500 miles. However, the range degradation has occurred and the charging time will definitely get longer than 45 minutes at normal temperatures. However, if in the future semi-trucks use Cattle's new battery, it'll be a different scenario because one of the breakthroughs of the LFP Gen 2 battery is the ability to operate better in colder weather. In the past, LFP batteries often had problems with performance when temperatures dropped. However, with this upgrade, Cattle has made Shenxing batteries able to operate at sub-zero temperatures and even charge at faster speeds under these harsh conditions. This has made many people surprised and curious about the potential of this battery, especially when it received the Techno Best 2024 award from a jury of 31 European countries. 
This is the first time a battery product has been honored with this prestigious award, a testament to the recognition of superfast charging's technological breakthrough. However, with all the advancements and advanced charging features, Cattle's new battery is expected to cost around $100 per kilowatt hour, a reasonable price for the performance and utility it offers. This also highlights the importance of developing high performance and durable batteries in driving the development of electric vehicles and green technology. The price of Tesla Semi will not be affected by such a cheap battery technology. We always get asked why doesn't Tesla build these mega chargers before electric trucks? Answering this question is actually quite difficult because other than the people inside Tesla, everything we see from the outside is just speculation. In addition to information about the cost of installing mega charger, which costs somewhere of up to $6 million, construction delays also come from infrastructure research plans or licensing from the government. On average, Tesla could generate nearly $30 billion annually by allowing electric vehicle manufacturers worldwide to charge at the supercharger network, taking a portion of the revenue and pocketing the rest. The $6 million per megacharger figure could easily be addressed. However, building megachargers requires approval from local authorities in cooperation with utility companies. This process can take a lot of time and effort. A prime example is PepsiCo, which has invested nearly two years in developing megacharger infrastructure at their Sacramento plant with about four stalls. They've also simultaneously committed to achieving greenhouse gas emission reduction goals and reducing dependence on the power grid. This is to ensure they can meet the increasing demand for electricity and battery charging, while also facilitating the convenient use of electric vehicles and renewable energy in the future. Returning to the process of building charging stations for this big rig, with the aforementioned nine mega charger stations, Tesla will construct a charging corridor for this big rig extending from Texas all the way to California, despite being rejected by the federally funded program under President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law. However, the initial scope of the project may still be subject to change. The company has sought nearly $100 million from the Discretionary Grants for Electric Vehicle Charging Infrastructure and Fueling Equipment Program under the Federal Highway Administration. Combined with about $24 million of its own funds, Tesla is determined to complete the construction of nine electric charging stations for trucks between Laredo, Texas and Fremont, California. If this corridor is successfully built, it'll be the first electric charging network capable of accommodating long-haul transportation and electric freight in the area while also helping to clean up much of the transportation sector, which has historically been dirty. However, without it, Tesla's promise of electrifying heavy-duty trucks may progress slowly than currently anticipated. Tesla is not among the 47 electric vehicle transition support groups operating in Arizona, California, and Texas announced by the Biden administration in January. In total, the winners got $623 million to build electric charging and fueling stations for electric vehicles nationwide. This is happening despite Tesla securing about 13% of all other charging awards to date under the Infrastructure Act, although it only brings the company about $17 million. In theory, the 1,800-mile corridor would connect two of Tesla's automotive manufacturing plants in North America as well as planned but delayed plant in Mexico. Initially, each station slated to be equipped with eight 750-kilowatt chargers for Tesla semis and four chargers for the other electric trucks. It remains unclear what the effectiveness would be if the company can't build all nine stations, evenly spaced along the route. The other half is earmarked to fund the 11 corridor projects, including several on the same I-10 corridor that forms part of Tesla's proposed route. That includes $70 million for the North Texas Council of Governments to build up to five hydrogen refueling stations for medium and heavy-duty trucks in the Dallas, Houston, Austin, and San Antonio areas. Despite everything, the Tesla Semi program is still gradually attracting customers. Just days after the restructuring, Semi program head Dan Priestley announced on social media that a new potential customer for the truck was Martin Brower. In a call in January, former Tesla CEO Andrew Boglino confirmed that the company had begun expanding the Gigafactory to produce Semi trucks. There have been signals related to additional Tesla Semi production since then, and while mid-March, Musk stated that future deliveries of semi-trucks in Europe would come from Giga Berlin, and the European factory would participate in their production. After seven years, Tesla's finally started taking these electric trucks seriously. However, it cannot be denied that Tesla delays over the past year have been significantly dampening the appeal of the Tesla Semi, even leading to it being overlooked as commercial companies grew impatient with the wait. For companies that have ordered electric semi-trucks in hopes of reducing carbon emissions, the lack of supply from Tesla has forced them to turn to other truck manufacturers, despite their lower performance and driving range when compared to the Semi. UPS had pre-ordered 125 fully electric Class 8 trucks, 
and Asko Norway, the logistics arm of Norway's largest grocery retailer, had put down a deposit for 10 trucks back in 2017. Both companies have yet to receive their orders. A UPS spokesperson told Reuters last week that the company is working closely with Tesla to determine delivery dates. The Freightliner eCascadia, manufactured by Daimler Truck, is the biggest competitor to the Tesla Semi. UPS, Walmart Canada, Cisco, and Schneider National have dozens of eCascadia trucks on the road, with Schneider alone using nearly 100 of them to transport goods, and that includes PepsiCo's Frito-Lay products. Compared to the Semi's operating range of nearly 500 miles, the Freightliner eCascadia provides about half the driving distance per full charge. However, its wider availability makes it a preferred choice for over 55 companies, according to Daimler Truck North America. The transition of the transportation industry to electric battery usage holds incredible potential for climate improvement. Studies show that heavy-duty trucks account for over a quarter of total climate pollution from transportation in the U.S., despite compromising only 4% of the total vehicles on the road. They're also responsible for 45% of nitrogen oxide pollution and 57% of fine particle pollution in the U.S. It's no coincidence that PepsiCo desires to acquire a large fleet of semi-trucks and use them regularly. It's all because the Tesla Semi has the revolutionary potential to transform the trucking industry and contribute to a greener future. However, it remains to be seen whether Tesla can overcome the hurdles of large-scale production and turn the dream of electric trucks into reality for both Tesla and commercial companies. Only time will tell whether the Tesla Semi will be a game-changer or just another ambitious electric truck concept. So, what do you expect from Tesla Semi's production process in the near future? And what do you think makes Tesla able to ramp up production of electric trucks even more? We appreciate your contribution. We hope you will have the most relaxing feelings after watching this video. If you did, please hit the like button and join the Tesla Car World family by subscribing to our channel. And don't miss out on any of our awesome videos by hitting the bell icon. We value your feedback and your time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Until then, stay safe and have fun.